Welcome to the continued adventures of Inigo and Colin. And Mr. Dragonfly, of course. I like talking about myself. I am very interesting. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. Hello, my friend. Inigo, would you mind doing the honours and uh, say thank you to Chelsea and Ed's Gaming and all our other lovely channel members? Thank you. Thanks, mate. Okay, let's go and see if we can get in Langley's good books. Come in. I'm guessing it's pretty cold out there. Hello, Langley. Inigo, I've been thinking. When you're not out adventuring with your friend, uh, where do you stay? I have a place in Riften. It is a bit cramped, but it is dry. And it often smells interesting. Well, if you ever want to come and stay with me, you're more than welcome. It could be beneficial to our cause. That is very kind of you, but I do not wish to intrude. You wouldn't be intruding at all. If you decide to move in, I'll make you a sleeping area. There's no shortage of timber around here. Thank you for the offer. I will certainly consider it. Good. I'll consider making some renovations then. Okay. Uh-huh. Any thoughts, Inigo? This place smells safe and fascinating. I know you wanted to go somewhere else for a chat, but would you like to relax here for a minute? Okay, maybe some of Langley's intelligence will rub off on me. It's a pretty good painting. I wish I could paint. I have always been more expressive with a sword. Then a brush. <laughs> I tried painting once. Followed the Bob Ross tutorials. It was absolute rubbish. <laughs> How you doing, Langley? What is it? Can I ask you something? I don't know. Can you? <laughs> I'll try. Tell me more about this prophecy of yours. The Inigo prophecy? Yes. Yeah. What do you want to know? Tell me everything. Oh dear, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Inigo knows a fair bit and you have those books <coughs> I gave him. If you know how to read. You look like you may have trouble with some of the bigger words. If you want someone to explain information to you that you already have written down, ask Inigo. Now, I'll read the books. But how do you know that your prophecy will come to pass? The truth is, I don't. But let's look at the evidence, shall we? On average, the accuracy of my visions is about 90%. That percentage goes up when the event I predict is closer in time and... Or, the subjects of the event are known to me. The fact that Inigo and I have now met and had a chat suggests the chance the rest of my vision will come to pass has increased substantially. Do you follow? Uh, no, not really. That would have been my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's this Doomstrider thing? Some giant troll or what? I'm horrified by how little I actually know on the subject. I think it's a human, or at least I believe it walks in a human form. My dreams and visions are often metaphorical, so it's hard to discern exactly what it is, or the nature of the destruction it'll bring. Okay, so in your dreams, what does the Doomstrider look like? There are two dreams. In both, I see a towering, dead-minded, red-eyed monstrosity walking the world, leaving sorrow, death, and despair in its wake. 
The very gods are powerless to intervene. In one vision I see them watch in horror as Nern decays and rots. Okay, so is the other dream any better? That one is a little better. It starts out in much the same way, but this time the champion is there to stop the Doomstrider. I see a baby blue Khajiit elude death before his first birthday. I see him grow into a great warrior. I see him and I talking in earnest. And I see the gods rejoice as he defeats the demon. Okay, how does he do that? That is unclear to me. Perhaps now Inigo and I are known to one another, my dreams will offer up a clearer picture. I'll be sure to keep him posted. So you said that your vision of the Doomstrider is metaphorical? Yes, I hope so. I'm inclined to believe that the images I see are not literal. Okay. The destruction I witness could be my mind's way of translating any great catastrophe. Perhaps the Doomstrider is an evil man who gains great power. Perhaps it's not a man at all. Maybe it represents famine or disease or even a wicked idea that infects every mind it touches. That said, considering Inigo is the champion and his skill set revolves around killing, I think it is more likely that the Doomstrider has a corporeal form. Okay. Can I ask you something else? I suppose. Tell me more about you. I'm an intelligent and very complex man. Try being more specific. What do you do here? I write and I experiment. I research and observe. I spend my days mapping out theories and ideas that strengthen humanity's intellectual grasp. I may not be very well known here, but my studies have earned me good standing among certain more rational factions of society. When did you start getting these visions, then? When I was very young. After I managed to convince people they were real, my father called them a gift. Most of the time, they're a bloody curse. For instance, I knew my mother was going to leave my father before she did. It's hard for a nine-year-old to know what to do with that information. Yeah. Your parents split up. Tell me more about your past. I'm a native of Skyrim, but I moved to Cyrodiil in my teens. I had a talent for magic, and I was packed off to the Imperial City on an apprenticeship. I never joined a guild or anything. I received my training from an angry little man called Barton Barrius. Bit of a pyromaniac, but a decent sort, really. <laughs> He never used his powers against humans, wouldn't hear of it, but he enjoyed burning everything else. Anyway, he taught me a great deal about destruction magic, alchemy, and even how to hone my visions. He imbued in me a thirst for knowledge, and I soon began researching a variety of subjects outside the discipline of magic. When I returned to Skyrim, I traveled the hells, making gold by predicting the weather for farmers and such. But my main focus soon became science. Science? It's like magic, but more reliable. It's all about systematically building knowledge and collecting testable explanations. In short, it is the study of everything. Tell me about your paintings. They are not for sale. Where do you get your materials? I make my own. I mix various ingredients with a little oil to create paint. And I've discovered a skeever's tail makes quite a decent brush. Unorthodox, but functional. The ability to improvise is useful when one is so far from civilization. When you paint, are they images from your visions? Yes. I discovered my love of art in the Imperial City. Now I yeah. mainly use my talents to depict what I see in my dreams. I paint them as soon as I wake up. I find that locking a dream in place in the form of a picture often lends further insight. Thanks, Langley. I'm going to go and see Inigo. Yes, I think that's enough chit-chat for now. Do you mind if I look around here? I guess not. I'm not in the mood anymore.
I seem to be easily distracted at the moment. That happens to me too. I was going to ask you something else, but uh, now the question eludes me. I'm sure it'll come back to you. Being easily distracted is a sign of intelligence. Don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> What do you think you are doing? I was trying to see what this is. It's not private, is it? Can I have a look? Dragon pie recipe. That could come in handy. Can I have some of these? Be careful with that alchemy table. It's a valuable scientific instrument, and it was a bloody nightmare hauling the thing up here. <laughs> what are you wearing, Pigo? Just a little something my friend gave me. Ah, interesting. I generally defer to my friend on all things fashion related. They have better taste than I do. Yes, well, you look nice. Good job, Inigo's friend. Thanks, Langley. Actually, it's Inigo's own thing from his, uh, from his cell, so it's not my taste at all. I'll try and get you something better. Yes, my friend. Any thoughts? Those items on the shelves Langley salvaged from my past bring back some good memories. The witches those skulls belonged to were very energetic. Removing their heads slowed them down. It, I would imagine it did, yeah. Blowaft's club still smells a little. He was the most odorsome giant I have ever put an end to. That helmet up there was only a little harder than the head of its owner. Luckily the neck beneath it was quite soft. I'm thinking you are a good friend. Thanks, mate. Mr. Dragonfly is hoping he does not end up in Langley's alchemy bowl. He is being overly dramatic. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Langley would let me sleep in his bed, and people say he's not a good guy. What, am I making a poison? Oh, I hope not. Oh dear. Just tidy Don't up for you, Langley. Don't make a mess, please. No, I'm trying to tidy up. The book was on the floor. That would never do. Mr. Dragonfly thinks Langley's alchemy is rudimentary at best. He is being a know-it-all. Well, he seems to have mistakenly made a poison, so he could be right. Langley, if you don't mind, I'm tired. I'm going to use your bed for a while. It's quite a long while. <laughs> Thanks, Langley. <laughs> we'll go now. Let you get some rest. Thanks for the loan of your bed. What is on your mind? Any thoughts? That figure surrounded by fire in the picture over there must be the Doomstrider. I do not like the look of those eyes. 
Langley's pictures are very unusual. He has a style all his own. They are a bit impressionistic, but accurate. Mr. Dragonfly thinks Langley's pictures are not very good. I would like to see him do better. He couldn't even hold a skeever tail. Mr. Dragonfly appreciates being in that picture over there, but he thinks Langley failed to capture his dashing good looks. Do you want to wait a bit longer before you go? Sure, if you're quiet, Langley wouldn't mind. I wonder what Langley is dreaming about. There he goes. Dear right. Diary, my name is Inigo. Pleased to meet you. I have kept journals in the past, but never a diary. You are my first. Please be gentle. Dear Diary, I hope my friend and I get a moment alone to relax and talk. I have a couple of things to ask. Things that should remain just between us. Dear Diary, my friend and I have had quite a time of late. We met Langley and gained a powerful spell. P.S. I am the champion. <laughs> Dear Diary, being summoned is a lot of fun. Langley calls it teleportation. Whatever you call it, it is fantastic. Dear Diary, my friend managed to collect more eggs than Langley thought they would. My friend is not to be underestimated. Champion Egg Collector. Dear Diary, I hope you are well. Just checking in really, how are you? Dear Diary, I know this ink is invisible, but I fear I may have just smudged you. I am sorry. Are you okay? Please write back soon. Dear Diary, I am starting to wonder if you will ever write back. I know my spelling is bad, but I do try. Do not hold it against me, please. Dear Diary, what is your favorite color? Mine is blue. Also, do you like sweet rolls? Dear Lazy Diary, I feel like I am just writing to myself here. Why do you not respond? Are you broken? Do you need fed? Dear Diary, I must get some ink that is visible. I am finding it hard to remember our last conversation. Dear Diary, if you are not going to write back, then what is the point? Are you angry at me? Again, I am sorry I smudged you. Dear Diary, Mr. Dragonfly says hello. Do not worry, I have told him about your grumpiness. He does not expect a response. Dear Diary, me again. I do not think you are ever going to write back to me. I have decided to take the high ground and still write to you. Dear Diary, here are some new words I have invented. I hope you like them. Tutelberg, Grimgog, Vamanyan. I will write down their definitions later. Dear Diary, here is the definition of a Tutelberg. A small floating rock of ice found in the sea. Dear Diary, here is the definition of Grimgog. An expression you wear when you experience surprise and sadness at the same time. That's um, beyond my acting abilities. <laughs> Dear Diary, here is the definition of a Vamanyan. Someone who controls the universe by writing a secret language.
that I haven't invented yet. Dear Diary, I just realized that you may be responding, but I cannot see what you are writing. Damn invisible ink. I am sorry if I was rude about you earlier. Should leave. I'd Dear Diary, I am missing Fergus more than usual today. I know he and my friend would have enjoyed each other's company. I don't think I've ever noticed that particular rug before. My wife used to make some just like it. Out of bits of old rags. Ripped up shirts and stuff. Inigo, I think you're done. Come on, Inigo, let's go and have that chat. You lead, I follow. Go out quietly for Langley. I'm thinking it's a gorgeous morning. Yeah. Did you get some sleep? I had a nice sleep. We need to get to Whiterun to see the Jarl, if you remember, about his dragon problem. And we'll have that chat in the Bannered Mare that you wanted. They say some folk can turn into beasts. I think someone like that would be a good ally, you know? Um, yeah, or they could end up ripping our head off. There he is. Did I see you talking to Sven? Maybe not. Maybe... Never mind. But I would stay away from him if I were you. What's your problem with Sven, Feindal? He's a bard, so he says. Occasionally he finds time to do his job here at the mill. Thinks his ballads and sonnets are going to convince Camilla Valerius to marry him. As if she would say yes. An intelligent, beautiful woman like her wouldn't fall for that nonsense. I hope. <laughs> you hope? You don't sound very sure. I've been thinking. Maybe Camilla needs a little help seeing Sven for what he is. Could you... Could you give her this letter and say it's from Sven? I think I've matched that Nord's lack of cleverness perfectly. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you've written. Dearest Camilla, I yearn to have you as my own, washing my linens, my fine blonde hair, to cook my dinner from my stove, and to tend my house while I wander. Yours truly, Sven. Um... Okay, I owe you, so I'll do it. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no! No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing! Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking about this. Oh, <clears throat> a customer. <laughs> um, sorry you had to hear that. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, you're Camilla? Maybe you could talk some sense into my pig-headed brother. Uh, I'll talk to him in a minute, but I've got a letter from you, uh, for you from Sven. Another poem, I bet. He does know how to make a girl blush. <clears throat> What's this? If that oaf thinks all I'm going to do is stay in that filthy house of his and clean, I'll... You can tell Sven that he already has a mother. I'm not speaking to him anymore. Oh. All right, then. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Feel free to shop. Okay, so did something bad happen? Uh, yeah, we, we did have a <clears throat> bit of a, a break-in. We, we still have plenty to sell. Robbers were only after one thing. An ornament. Solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. Please. Is there any way that I could help get the claw back for you? You could? I've got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. Now, if you're going to get those thieves, you should head to Bleak Falls Barrow, northwest of town. So this is your plan, Lucan? Yes. 
So now you don't have to go, do you? Oh, really? Well, I think your new helper here needs a guide. Well, no, I... By the eight, fine. But only to the edge of town. This way. I really didn't want to go to Bleak Falls Barrow. We're going to go see the Yarl first, whatever she says. Okay, I can't wait all day. Tell me as soon as you've given Camilla the letter. I don't think you'll have any more trouble with Sven. I appreciate your help. Please, take this. Some gold I've saved up from working at the mill. Thanks, mate. Um, you want to come and join us? I could do with a good man with a bow. Lead the way. I wonder what adventures this new day will bring. So, Feindal is on the team and he is safe in this party. Are you coming? Those thieves must be mad hiding out there. Those old crypts are filled with nothing but traps, trolls, and who knows what else. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to go there. It was actually the last place I wanted to go. And I have to go and see the Jarl in Whiterun first. Because of the dragons. I saw a dragon. I wonder why they only stole Lucan's Golden Claw. I mean, we have plenty of things in the shop that are worth just as much coin. Lucan found the claw about a year after he opened the store. He never quite explained where he got it. He's a tricky one. Hmm. How does he know it's in Bleak Falls Barrow? Ouch. This is the bridge out of town. The path up the mountain to the northwest leads to Bleak Falls Barrow. I guess I should get back to my brother. He'll throw a fit if I take too long. <laughs> Such a child. Thank you for the um, conversation. Say goodbye to Feindal on the way out, on, on your way back. I hear wolves. Another soul demands release. This is huh? That takes One care of that. What are you about? Is that all you got, find all a dagger? Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, the wind blows bitter cold in this place. It's not too bad today. It's quite a nice day. What have you got for sale? Take a look. Sweet roll. May your road lead you to warm sands. Thanks. I could have done with three, but seeing as you've only got one, I'll give it to my friend. Uh huh. Inigo, I've got something for you. I must warn you if you give me a sweet roll, I will make it disappear. That's why I bought it. Ah. Uh, there you go. Goods and wares of Back all to time, business. And all can be yours. Enjoy, my friend. Halt. City's closed with the dragons about. Official business only. I have official business. Fine. But we'll be keeping an eye on you. As it should be. Keep up the good work.
We'll pay whatever it takes, but we must have more swords for the Imperial soldiers. I just can't fill an order that size on my own. Why don't you swallow that stubborn pride of yours and ask Yorland Greymane for help? <laughs> I'd sooner bend my knee to Ulfric's Stormcloak. Besides, Greymane would never make steel for the Legion. Have it your way. I'll take the job, but don't expect a miracle. This town is very pretty, but it is not as delightfully damp as Riften. The right fire in the wrong place could do a lot of damage here. This place is like a sensory enema. Whiterun has some of the best air in Skyrim. There is a subtle dog breath aftertaste though. If you need anything else, just ask. Come on. Get in the... In. Oh, did I? Yes, there it is. Found me a spell book. You want a drink? Um, in your face. Um, no, thank you, um, Sardia. Depends. Are you thirsty? <laughs> Hungry? Both. Okay, let's have a look, see what you got. Four sweet rolls. I'll take those. And I'll take your venisons as well. Now please, no more questions. I think I'm missing something somewhere. Yes? Whatever you say. Rest while you can, legs. Rest while you can. Okay, what's on your mind? My friend, do you mind if I ask you something? Not at all, go ahead. Okay. Langley is a very interesting man. He knows <laughs> yeah. a lot about me, and there is a great deal of evidence that his visions usually come to pass. Yep. All that said, we have only just met him. In your heart of hearts, do you think we can trust him? Um, actually, yes, I do. I think he's trying to help us. I feel the same way. He has many flaws, but who doesn't? Even though we have just met, he has been a part of my life for years. He is a good man. Hearing your opinion has eased my mind. Thank you, my friend. You're there welcome. is something else I am compelled to mention. Uh, what would that be? When you were outside getting those eggs, I told Langley about how you spared my life and my debt to you. He questioned my memory. He said my mind has been through a lot with the skooma, the grief, and the endless battles and so on. He suggested that maybe you are not the person I remember. Oh, here you go. That's ridiculous. We have a past together. It's just that my memory's addled from the blow on the head. I can't remember. It's ridiculous. I know. That is what I told him. You are my friend to the end. Langley may know a lot, but he does not know everything. He is just jealous of our friendship. Pay it no mind. Anyway, that is all I wanted to say. Let us talk of other things. Okay, what are you thinking about right now? The Summon Inigo spell has more than a few uses. With it, I can surprise enemies, get out of trouble in a hurry, and really weird people out. <laughs> Mr. Dragonfly is wondering how he fits into this Doomstrider business. I think he has an overinflated sense of self-importance. Accepting Langley's apology was very big of you. You showed great restraint. No, he's okay. I'm thinking if you don't eat that sweet roll, <laughs> I will. The Bannered Mare is nicer than most of its patrons. A family feud divides this town. This is nice. Two companions relaxing in an inn together. I wonder when we will next get the chance. Hmm. 
I'm thinking that it is colder outside than it is in here. My father always said alcohol is not the answer, but it does make you forget the question. Okay, let me trade with you. I'll give you those sweet rolls I got. Pooling our resources. There you go. Come on. I ain't <laughs> Just a few seconds. Can you close up the sand early today, Mama? I'm afraid not, little fairy. The fruit has about another day left before it's spoiled. What can I do for you, friend? As much as we can, as soon as we can. Okay, that's it for today. What can I get we'll for you? see you next time. It's always true. Say goodbye for now, Inigo. Goodbye for now. Bye for now. Tune in next time for more fantastic adventures starring Inigo the Brave, Mr. Dragonfly the Dizzy, and Colin the Kind. Brolia, do you ever deal with the Khajiit at all? I'm sure they would love to trade in your husband's steel. Plenty of people here that need your lungs craftsmanship, my dear. We've never had any reason to deal with those caravans of theirs.